Assetto Corsa Competizione build 1.2 is here, and with it comes a frankly mammoth list of fixes, upgrades and new features. The headline items that have got people talking include the implementation of chassis flex, pattern disk wear and changes to the tyre model. And while all of these are much welcomed, they're also quite subtle, nuanced changes that don't really fit the day one video model as far as I'm concerned. So today I'm going to focus on the other headline feature, the car customization function, by getting out the metaphorical digital crayons and seeing if I can recapture the magic of some classic racing liveries on the GT3 cars of ACC. Car customization functionality in ACC is pretty basic, thanks I'm told to licensing issues. Unlike their previous title, Kunos have a real world racing series to keep happy this time around, and honestly, you guys have proven to be uh, quite creative in your approach to custom liveries. Anyhow, I thought it'd be fun to try and recreate some iconic racing liveries to the best of my ability with the tools available in ACC, to one, show you how they work, and to also see how well they work. This is probably my favourite livery of all time. Turquoise and black is a great colour combination, and the cars that it appeared on in the mid 2000s were legendary, notably the GT1 Celine and Maserati, so I thought let's try and recapture it on one of the supercars in ACC. After looking through for a suitable subject, the 2019 Huracan fit the bill. The car's proportions are good, and importantly, there's a preset design that matches the layout of the Vitaphone cars. From then on, it was simply a case of adding in the appropriate details and choosing the best match for the turquoise. Not only can you select the colour, but also the reflectivity of the paint, from matte through to a highly reflective chrome. In this case, a traditional gloss seemed to fit the spirit of the original best. Next up were the wheels, which were a glossy black on the real car, so that's what I went with on the rim and accent colour. Now the older cars weren't adorned with LED lights like modern GT3 Christmas trees are, so I chose a subtle lighting accent to update the design a little, but hopefully keeping it fairly close to the original. And that was that. A nice simple design to kick things off, and not bad for a first effort if I do say so myself. You may have noticed that one of the limitations of the livery builder is that you can't add your own sponsors. In fact, you can only choose from the car manufacturer name or from the companies that are affiliated with ACC in some way. As you may have already guessed, these won't be featuring heavily in a video dedicated to historic liveries. So to get around that for the next skin, I chose a car that carried virtually no sponsorship, the Jaguar XJR14, my favourite of all of the TWR Jags. Getting the purple right was pretty tricky, though with a combination of metallic satin and chrome versions of the same hue, I think I captured the spirit of the livery, if not all that accurately. Which exposes another weakness of the livery builder, the available colour choice. While there are a few hundred distinct colour values to choose from, I would have much preferred a colour picker and or hex value input to give a bit more choice. But anyway, on with the Jag. I chose white for the giant Jaguar logo, which didn't feature on the prototype, but it does look rad. The original Group C car featured gold and silver rims, which I did my best to recreate here, though I must admit I preferred the black versions I tried out afterwards. So in the end, not a particularly faithful reproduction of the TWR XJR14, but I think it captures something of the mood of the original, and importantly, it looks miles better than the Emil Frey paint job. A bit deterred by my lack of success with the Jag, I thought I'd go for a dead cert, a golf racing Porsche. Modern recreations of this livery are a bit hit or miss, and the GPX racing version in ACC is no exception. The livery is iconic, but something just doesn't quite feel right about it. Luckily, whoever put together the templates for the editor knew exactly what we want to do, and design template number 6 does a great job of mimicking the shape of the Golf livery as applied to the 917. Honestly, this paint job was dead easy, the hardest bit being choosing between the numerous shades of sky blue. There were no real compromises necessary either, save for the lack of Golf Oil logo. I think, I think it looks the business. Like with the Lambo, I added a bit of subtle orange LED lighting because RGB LEDs makes things go quicker, that much is known. 
So you know the score at this stage. Try to make the new V8 Vantage look as much like the god tier DBR9 as possible. The default design number one is pretty close, which is half the job done. Just need to find an appropriate British racing green, slap on the number 007 and we're good to go. The green isn't perfect, but again, we're working within the limitations of the software. And honestly, it's not too far off. As far as throwbacks go, I think this one is pretty damn close. To finish things off, this one's a little bit of a curveball. When browsing through the AMG GT3 preset patterns, I noticed there was a design where the secondary colour on the side of the car sloped upwards towards the rear, just like several of the schemes on the old Mercedes 190e touring cars. Unable to replicate the pinstripes of the classic Sonax car, this beery beauty seemed like just the ticket. And of course there's a sim racing link through the team name as well. As with the Aston, there really wasn't a close enough match for the dark green, which really should have a slightly more bluey hue. But the gold is spot on, and the combination does look pretty sharp if I do say so myself. Even the gold rim, something I'm not normally too keen on, seemed to work great here. To finish up, I added a gold LED strip to the top of the windscreen, because why not? All in all, it's far from a replica of the old DTM beast, but I think the livery evokes some of the spirit. If you've dabbled with the liveries in ACC before, then you'll know that this update's very much just a user interface implementation of the old open up notepad and edit a text file system that was in place previously. So for some, this may not be all that exciting. But that all being said, being able to put together a livery in a couple of minutes with live previews and without needing to cross-reference various online lookup tables is a bit of a godsend if you like creating custom liveries. On the other side of the coin though, I still can't help but feel that this feature, while welcomed, is a bit too restrictive. I understand Kunos's reasoning and the commercial considerations that they face, but I for one would love to see a bit more flexibility in the livery editor, even if it's just something as simple as allowing custom shaped stickers, as you see in other driving games. Oh, and a full colour palette too, while I'm wishlisting. If you want to download any of the liveries that I've created here, then I've put a download link in the video description. All you have to do is copy those files into the ACC Custom Cars folder in Documents and Settings. So that just about wraps things up here. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, it would be great if you could hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you can see more content like this in the future. So all that's left to say is goodbye, thank you for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day.